What's up guys, before we get into this, I do wanna announce that I am still doing the Periapt one-of-a-kind blue lightning cable giveaway. If you wanna enter to win this, all you have to do is follow me on Twitter and tweet me that you want the cable, and then uh, once I'm done with it, I'll send it over to you if you win. Thanks a lot, back to the video. What's up guys, my name is Josh, and uh, today we are going to be comparing three Odyssey headphones. The LCD 2Cs, the LCD Xs, and the LCD Threes. Now, since these are such complicated headphones and uh, there's a lot to cover on these and I want to be really transparent here, I'm not going to be able to cover everything to keep this under the 20 minute time limit that I'm really shooting for because everything over that, I think it's just going to be too much, uh, a little bit too much information for people to understand and get through correctly and kind of navigate through. So I want to try and lay out kind of the bigger differences between each of these and where maybe you should put your money and maybe where you shouldn't put your money. Um, depending on what you're looking for. And then of course I'll throw in my opinions. Uh, so real quick before we get started, I do wanna mention uh, Patreon. I am releasing videos early now, about two to three days on average. This video and all my comparisons and reviews are going on Patreon early. Um, so if that sounds interesting, there's a link down below. And then the last thing before we get started is that I will have individual reviews of each of these headphones. I already have the two Cs out. I'm still doing the X right now and the threes right now. So those aren't out. I will put links to everything when it's available in the description of this video. But I have to send these two Cs back really soon so I wanted to get this video before those are gone and I didn't want to just go based off of memory. So these three are fairly different. Uh, the 2Cs are made of plastic, the Xs are made of metal, and the threes are made of wood. The 2C is the only non-phaser here. The X and the threes have a phaser on them. If you're really into phasers or you're really not into phasers, that may be a consideration for you. So the next thing about the build is going to be the weight between all three of these. The two C's are the lightest, the threes are in the middle, and the X's are the heaviest to my my hands and what I can feel. I'm not sure exactly how much they weigh. Although it is worth noting that the 2C is the only one with the current headband. If you buy the LCD3 or the X new right now, you will get this better, much better headband uh, than the ones that I personally have, which is kind of the older school leather headband. I don't really like this one as much. It's very top heavy. Um, you can really feel it right on the top of your head. The 2C's headband does a much better job of spreading that weight out over the top of your head, although it is worth noting, I don't really notice weight much. Um, I do consider it, but it's not something that really bugs me personally, but it may bug you. And all three of these would be considered fairly heavy headphones. There's something that I wanna complain about regarding build. The 2C's come in about $800 and the threes come in about you know two thousand dollars so they're about two and a half times the money and honestly the build quality in between models is just about the same and now if you're new to this hobby this model and you don't know how much they cost and you don't know what they are this model looks almost identical to the lcd4 just in black and i would have liked to see a little bit of visual disparity there to separate the higher end models from the lower end models okay now onto the power requirements of each of these headphones the 2c is a 70 ohm headphone with a sensitivity level of 101 decibels the X is the most efficient to drive of the bunch. It is a 20 ohm headphone and has a sensitivity level of 103 decibels. And the LCD3 here is a 110 ohm headphone with a sensitivity level of 102 decibels. So you've got 110, 20, 70, and then uh, 101 decibels, 103 decibels, and 102 decibels. So right around the same power requirements for total volume output, the X's being the most efficient of the bunch. You can run the X's off of pretty much anything. Your phone will work. You can run the other two off of your phone, although I do more recommend an amplifier with those. Now, although I'm not gonna list an amplifier for any of these as absolutely required, I do think it is highly recommended even on the X. You're really only gonna see benefits from going to an amplifier versus something coming out of your phone. Now let's talk about the differences in sound signature between all three of these. And like I said, there is some stuff I'm gonna leave out, unfortunately. Uh, there is a lot of differences between these, but I'm just gonna give out kind of the key points for time purposes. Okay, my overall impressions of the 2C is that it is a very, very smooth and very wide headphone compared to the other two. Um, it is the smoothest of the bunch. It has the most recessed highs of the bunch. It is the easiest to listen to, I would say, but that doesn't necessarily mean the most enjoyable, but it is the easiest to listen to. Um, and it does have the widest sound stage, but it also has the least accurate imaging. The X's overall are the most intense. They're the most intimate. They give you the most sound out of everything. They kind of force everything to you. And these are primarily made to be used as studio monitors, and you can absolutely do that with this headphone. Uh, more information on that in the full review, like I said, that's coming soon. Patreon, haha, <laughs> another plug, sorry. Um, and they're just intense, you get everything, you feel like nothing is left out. Now the threes here are kind of a mix between the two. 
They're very intense in certain areas and they're very smooth and easy to listen to in others. Uh, soundstage is also in the middle. The X is a very tight headphone. Uh, in Soundstage, it doesn't go very far out. It has impeccable imaging. So do the threes here, but they're a little bit wider, but not quite as wide as the 2C. So now that the generalizations of everything are kind of out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the specifics of the sound, starting with treble. And uh, like usual with all of these things, we're gonna start with the 2Cs because they're the cheapest and go up from there. So like I said before, these have the most recessed treble of the bunch. Uh, they're very laid back. They're very easy going. They don't force themselves on you like they do kind of with the other two. However, in comparison, this can kind of be a detriment because there are some times where I feel like like I am missing certain parts of the songs because they are not as present as they are, especially when I was comparing the two. Now, all three of these are very, very good headphones, this one included. This headphone has brilliant mid-range and bass response. Um, for $800, I personally highly recommend it, but in comparison against the other two, the treble is a little bit lacking. Now for the treble regions, the X is actually my favorite. I found with the X, it had a good mixture of being incredibly present, incredibly detailed, very, very resolving in the top end. And by top end, I mean like 10 to 20K area. It was just excellent. And it wasn't too much. And that was the key. It was just under that level of being a little bit too bright while not actually getting there. It was just bright enough to be perfectly enjoyable, perfectly attainable for all your detail, all that top end that you would want, or maybe you don't, uh, but all the top end that I look for without getting over that level, without ever overstepping, while still maintaining a very intense and visceral sound to it. Personally, between the three, the treble on this one has my favorite implementation. The threes have a closer representation to the highs towards the Xs than they do the two Cs, although they're a little just a little bit too intense for me. They peak and recess in different areas in the X's because all three of these measure similarly, but they don't sound similar. Um, and I'm gonna get more into that in a second. But the threes have all the detail and the presentation of the X's while boosting them in different areas and the areas that they choose to boost the threes in just didn't sit perfectly well with me. And occasionally I would hear cymbals or horns or uh, even like really screechy vocals that were just a little bit too just a little bit too much for me and a little bit too intense and I would have to lower the volume down and that subsequently dropped all the other ranges. And I feel like these were just a little bit harsh, but that kind of louder top end might be something you're looking for. And I am particularly sensitive compared to the average for treble. So consider that uh, if you are deciding to purchase these or not. Okay, now let's talk about the mid range. So the mid range is a bit of a mixed bag between all three of these. Personally, the mid range comes across, I think, more focused on the two C's than the other two, but the other two are a little bit more in line with the rest of the ranges. They're a little bit more even than the two C's are, especially given the, the treble recession that the two C's have. If you look at a frequency response graph, there is kind of a build up towards the 1K area and then it kind of tapers down. And like I said in the review, what this kind of adds to and more on vocals in a second, but this adds for absolutely beautiful vocals. And the mids in this are just a little bit more forward than the other two. And that results in a very, very good sound. Now this kind of goes for instruments and I'll, I'll discuss uh, vocals separately because I think that's kind of a different issue. But uh, for the mid range for instruments, I would say though that the, the X has technically better performance than the 2C, although not quite as good as the threes for mid range. Now my opinion here in a second will kind of flip flop when we talk about vocals uh, and kind of know where that's going already. Um, but if you're gonna come at this from an evenness standpoint, from a flatness standpoint, from a technicality standpoint, I think the Xs do it better than the two Cs. Now the threes here have very similar performance to the mid range of the X. Although the implementation of the soundstage and imaging and how everything sounds is a little bit different than the X. And that's really where those two separate regarding mid range. Okay, now for vocals. And I know that there are some of you who care about vocals. I am gonna be obviously transparent like I am with everything. Vocals are some of my favorite parts of music. So if a headphone can't do vocals well, it's pretty much a no-go in my opinion. I wanna say right off the bat here that none of these do vocals poorly. Um, and if we're comparing these not based off of price, just headphone to headphone to headphone, I honestly think that the two Cs take away the vocals compared to the other two. The other two feel a little bit thin, especially when you get into lower mid-range vocals to where they need to be a little bit more guttural, a little bit bassier, a little bit fuller they lack that just ever so slightly compared to the 2C. Now this may be to the 2C's detriment though for you. I could see somebody considering the upper range as a bass like anywhere between like 
150 to 300 hertz to maybe be a little bit too flooded into the vocal ranges, but the way that it's implemented here is just absolutely astonishing to me. And these are some of the best vocals that I've heard on any headphone, period. And this goes into pretty stark and good contrast from the wide soundstage that is offered from these. Now, the vocals on this are not nearly as focused as I would have appreciated and as focused as they are on the X, although the X and the threes, like I said, are gonna be a little bit thin comparatively, but they are more forward. The X's have the thinnest vocals between all three. Uh, the threes are a little bit in between in terms of fullness, although the two C's are definitely a step ahead of the threes in my opinion. But like I said, if you're looking for what is going to be considered like a, a better reference or a more even headphone or a better well-rounded headphone, the X and the three are probably gonna be a little bit better for you. But if you're into pure enjoyment, kind of like I am, I don't really care how a headphone measures, I just wanna know how it sounds at the end of the day. Am I excited to listen to it? And for vocals, the two Cs do it for me. Okay, now into the bass response of all three of these. The bass response of the two C is the most substantial in amount. Um, however, there's a little bit of a trade-off here. It's a little bit loose compared to the other two. The X and the three, they're tighter, they're cleaner, and they're a whole lot faster. Although the X and the three have very, very similar bass response um, from what I can hear. And neither seems to really be particularly faster or tighter or more well-rounded than the other. So for bass response, you have a choice. Do you want the evenness, the speed, the, the quickness of the bass response of the X and the three, or do you want the amount and the ever so slightly bloominess of the two C? Now, I think that bloominess could be considered a downside. I personally consider it a benefit, uh, but that's gonna be up to you. Now, like I've reiterated now a couple times, these are in comparison. All three of these have excellent bass response. Just the two Cs have a little bit more and the X and the threes is a little bit cleaner, a little bit tighter, a little bit more clinical. Now, imaging and soundstage is where these headphones really separate. Uh, you have a incredibly tight and intense headphone like the X, and then you have a fairly wide headphone like the two Cs. And then you kind of have the threes sitting kind of in a, in a happy in between. Probably due to the intimacy of the soundstage and imaging, the X lacks dead points or dead spots or dead zones or whatever they're called in the imaging. So when you're imaging left to right, it is all the way there. Whereas the 2C is like really to the right, kind of a little in the middle, then really in front of you, then a little to the left, and then really to the left when it gets all the way to the side of you. And then again, right in the middle of that is going to be the threes. So the threes are really a good all-rounder for imaging and soundstage. They have very, very tight imaging, pretty much on par with the X here, um, but not quite as wide, but close to the soundstage width as the two C's. And personally, the one that I gravitate towards the most for imaging and soundstage is the X. And part of that is the X's ability to just give you everything, every little bit of detail, every nuance in every instrument um, the X delivers to you. Whereas I feel like the twos and the threes lie to you a little bit. Now it's a good lie, it's, it's an enjoyable lie, but I feel like it is hiding a little bit compared to the X's. Now I do wanna go over some final thoughts between these three that weren't necessarily what I'm gonna present as my conclusion and didn't really fit into the other areas. And there's really kind of two main points. One is going to be, I feel like the dynamic range is not as good on the X's, but I feel like that is to its benefit. I feel like the low spots of a, a song are really brought up so that they're easily audible. Now you may like this or you may not. If you're a person who really likes really large dynamic range, this is not gonna be the headphone for you. I think that dynamic range is great to a point. Sometimes I think when a song is really, really low and then gets really bright really quick and then really low, it's not personally very enjoyable for me. So having kind of the evenness of the sound in terms of the dynamics of it is really beneficial for my personal tastes. Now the two Cs kind of do the same thing for uh, the mid-range and the bass response, but those do have what I would consider to be a greater dynamic range at the top end, like 10 to 20K area. And then again, a happy in-between between the two is gonna be the threes here. They have the best dynamic range between both of these. Uh, they can seem really, really low and really, really loud. Now again, for enjoyment purposes, that kind of adds to a little bit peaky of a sound sometimes where it just is a little bit too intense in certain songs and certain instruments. All right, and then the next point is gonna be uh, that the X's, I, I'm not sure what causes this or what the proper terminology for this, but these sound a lot more open 
than the other two despite the lack of sound stage. Now, I don't mean this as in they sound thin, but they sound airy. They sound very open and that there isn't a film or a or anything muffling the sound. It's very, very crystalline and very clear. Whereas the 2C and the 3 sound slightly muffled actually compared to the X. The X is kind of like getting like a breath of fresh air. It's just relieving and a lot more open sounding than the other two. And for my personal taste, that really goes along with what I like. Now, this is gonna lead me into my conclusion here. Now, in order of what headphones I think are worth it the most, including the, the cost of them and all the factors put together, I think it goes in order of X is gonna be my first option, two Cs are gonna be second, and then threes are gonna be last. All three of these headphones are brilliant headphones. They all sound really, really amazing. With the threes, the reason why they're in the last place is because for the threes here, it's very, very difficult for me to justify an additional $800 over the X's considering how similar they sound and the added benefit of sounding so open that the X's have. The threes are a brilliant headphone, but I don't know if they're worth $2,000. They are beautiful and they have an immaculate fit and finish and it's probably not gonna show up very well on film but they are very, very well built and very beautiful in my opinion. But $2,000 is a large pill to swallow. Now, the reason why I picked the X to be first over the 2C, the X is a better overall headphone and you have pretty much only benefits and only one detriment over the 2C. Well, two detriments if you count price. And that's gonna be the lower end of vocals. Now, vocals on the X are incredibly good and I didn't want it to seem like any of these were bad, just in comparison, I do think the twos take it away just a little bit. And so I had to give that to the twos. The X's are still a very enjoyable headphone, but they give you more ranges, but they do have their own issues. They sound very intimate and very, very intense. And that may not be something that you're into. You may like the wider, softer sound of the two C. And that's really the only reason why the two C's didn't make it to the number one spot. The two C's are a brilliant headphone. They're absolutely worth $800 in my opinion. And the trouble in my opinion is a little bit too recessed. So if I'm gonna come at this from a objective standpoint of what's going to give you the most amount of sound, I think that the X's are worth it. And the additional cost, I think it's about 400 more for the X is really worth it. Also for the fact that you can easily run the X's off of a cell phone and you don't need an amplifier at all. Whereas the two C is not required but it's definitely more recommended than the uh, X's here. So the X's are the winner between the three, although both are brilliant headphones. Anyways, I guess that's gonna be my comparison here. I'm sorry for this taking so long. You know, it's been a lot. Uh, thank you for sticking with me here. And uh, to wrap this up, I do wanna give another shout out to Josh with Honest Audio for sending in the two C's and the KSC-75s. Check out Honest Audio down below. Uh, the two gentlemen who sent me the threes and the X do wanna stay anonymous. I will have full reviews of both of those. And I also wanna thank patrons who made this possible. Thank you very much. If you want to check out Patreon, there is a link down below for early access to videos like this one. All right, guys, my name is Josh. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.